So we're gonna have magic. West Felton in the building, the boiler room. Let's go. You're now rocking with the best. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Seen it all before. The same old story. Listen, she said, if you're gonna love me, love me, love me all the way. That's what she told him. If you're gonna love me, love me, love me all the way. A little girl asked the little boy why he didn't love her the same love her all the way they shared so many moments of joy with equal moments of pain they keep working pushing forward like the good book said they keep working pulling ignoring all the things in their heads and they say say if you're gonna love me love me love me all the way huh, that's what he told her say, if you're gonna love me love me love me all the way break it down she's like huh i heard people don't change they all remain the same. Mm -mm -mm. Huh. That's what the little boy said before he went madly insane. Listen, the little girl stopped him dead in his tracks, told him to hurry back for another play day. Rump a room, sharing snacks. But he told her, he said, if you're gonna love me, love me, love me all the way. Uh, that's what he told her. He said, if you're gonna love me, love me, love me all the way. Uh, he then got on his knee. He said, if you're gonna love me, me all the way oh, 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 oh if you're gonna love me love me all the way boy he's on the keys hey good god almighty 
oh, 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 same old story. Say, say, if you're gonna love me, 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 love me. Hello everybody, it is me once again, Precious Joubert, and we are here live at the ballroom. Today we have the wonderful artist, singer, poet, MC, Mr. West Felton. How are you? Hello. <laughs> What's happening, world? Uh, it's a pleasure to be here in the ballroom. It's an honor, actually. Uh, You're that. It's an honor, th right? They do some amazing things in this place. Oh, so. thank you for so coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, for those who might not be familiar with your work and how you got started on your musical journey, let folks know, what was that moment? What, what did it for you? Well, you know, I, um, I basically, I, I, I was, my father was a jazz pianist named Hilton Felton, and um, I, um, I grew up in a home that was, you know, uh, basically fed and encouraged by way of art, mm -hmm. by way of music, because that's what he did. And that was before the internet, that was before any of that type of stuff. And um, it's, uh, you know, as time went on, as I got older, I, I began to get drawn more into the performance aspect. So I started off writing, like, poetry and stuff. So I'd be that kid nice. who would be that, that weirdo, that one kid <laughs> who's, like, going to the poetry spots where everybody else is doing whatever other things teenagers were doing at that time. And then I discovered theater and uh, went to study theater at Carnegie Mellon University. And while I was in Carnegie Mellon, as a kind of outlet, I began to do music in the Pittsburgh community. Okay. So, you know, Carnegie Mellon was a very, it was like a culture shock coming from D.C., you know. And um, I went there and um, I started this music career and then came back to D.C., reintroduced myself to the community. I saw that everyone was starting to do poetry and doing what I had done as a teenager. So okay. I began to evolve my poetry into songs and I began to sing because people didn't know that I could sing. And so um, I kind of rolled with that, and, um, and then that took another life and manifestation of its own. And I would say for the last, um, shoot, I don't know, uh, <laughs> 15, <laughs> year, years. 15 years, okay. uh, give or take, it has okay. actually been able to feed me and uh, keep me from being like, you know, living in a box somewhere or whatever. And um, yeah. What was your first substantial acting gig? My, my first substantial acting gig? <clears throat> now, what does substantial mean? I don't know. What, what, when were you like, you know, you got a call and you were like, oh my God, I got to take this gig. What well, then there's that? a couple of them. There's a couple of them. Okay. But it depends. Like, what was your first I'll be, I'm going to be going to do it quick. The first real one was there was a movie called National Treasure. Okay. 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 Right. And apparently there was somebody who, who dropped out. So they needed, they had an extra, I mean, it's just an extra part or whatever, okay. mm -hmm. and it was like, they called me at like, you know, midnight, you know, and they were like, hey, you know, this is a uh, casting agency you signed up with at that time, and they were like, hey, you know, we need somebody on the set right here, Nicolas Cage film, blah, 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 blah right, you know, so I get there, and um, they put me in this, this really like uncomfortable like costume where basically I'm like wearing like this like white wig <laughs> and like shoes and things like that um, and uh, long story short it basically was like I was out there for like hours like into the middle of the night and, oh, long, wow. and long story short you know I got paid and I got some SAG credit um, which is the Screen Actors Guild I got credit for that and but then my clips and my scenes didn't even make the film. It's but but they, but they made but out. they made the DVD bonus. They <laughs> made the DVD bonus. You're on the DVD bonus. Yeah, which my sister in Norfolk, Virginia, discovered by just watching it. You know that that just goes to show you how family can be, how so nice. so supportive that she was just like you know. I guess my mom told her like hey, you know he did this thing and she just was so stick to it that she like discovered that. So that was just like a cool highlight. Um, but 
I also had a chance to work with Chris Rock on his record, Never Scared. Nice. And that was really cool because that came by surprise. Um, I had a, a, a mentor of mine named Prince Paul who had basically called me and was like, hey man, I got a session for you. I know you're in New York. Just show up to this address. I show up in the address, get on the elevator uh, with this guy named Mike Cottom at the time. He was my management. Um, and he was like, we're on the elevator with Simon and Garfunkel. So we're like sitting, we're standing there, and I'm like looking like, where the hell, like, what am I getting to? So we get up, we get to the eighth floor, right? And we get off the floor, and I hear somebody saying, so you telling me Jamaicans, they make sugar cane, they make this, they make that, and they don't even own it, right? And I'm thinking to myself, like, wait a minute. I had just got back from Texas from doing a show, and I was watching the Chris Rock um, special at that time that, he, that had premiered that Saturday. And so I was like getting up there and I was like, oh my God, like they must be watching that, right? So I walk into the room and all of a sudden, all of a sudden I hear, oh, W. Ellington Felton, it smells like poetry. And this oh. You know, and I, I look in the booth and it's Chris Rock. And I'm like, I see Paul, I see Prince Paul at the booth and he's with uh, Ali Leroy and other guys who, like who created Foodie Tang and, you know, just their mm -hmm. click, right? And I'm like saying to myself, like, what has Paul got me into? And so immediately the secretary rushes me out in the hallway and gets me to like work out the publishing agreements and all of that. And I still don't know what I'm doing, but they let me know I'm getting publishing yeah. and I'm getting credits and all this. And I'm like, oh man, like what am I in? So then I get there and they basically just told me like, look, we want to use, first of all, one of your poems, but then also we want to have you like help us write this skit about a poet who kidnaps um, the governor's daughter. And so it was my opportunity as an artist who constantly tries to evolve, try to finally kill my identity as a poet. And I had the opportunity to do it on a national scale and also be nominated for a Grammy for a comedy album and be associated with that. So that, 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 that's, not a, that's not my acting highlight, but it is kind of like but an acting highlight. But that's a hell of a highlight. It's voiceover highlight. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. is a dope highlight. Yep. Yeah. So that's, that's like my like kind of... But I've done films and done plays and things like that um, since then. But I've been fortunate and blessed to just kind of concentrate as an actor, you know, on art that I believe in. So. And I follow you on Instagram and Facebook and all that. And mm -hmm. I, I noticed it was a couple of months back that you were working with some children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was doing, doing I was doing this play um, called Ellington's Neighborhood, where I, I played this this kind of like time traveler who took kids throughout D.C. and let them know about. Um, the fact that, you know, Duke Ellington went to some of the same schools as they did and walked some of the same streets as they walked. And, oh. and just like him, they have the potential to be, you know, a national hero or, you know. A lot of my time is spent often engaging in my music career, but then also being a father and trying to, like, you know, make sure that, you know, I made a decision to be a father, mm -hmm. you know, um, and still try to engage my passion. So, I can't, like, it, it's not like I started off as, like, a lawyer and then one day woke up and was like, hey, baby, I'm going to be an artist. Right, right. right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like the reverse. Mm -hmm. So, for my evolution has had to involve me being an artist first and foremost, and then being a father, and then now, okay, now how do I mature both and make both of them, you know, clear and and stated so that's like you know that's
like we're running from the law. We act like no one else can see us, see us, see us. Like they've never seen love before. But they ain't never seen this before. I ain't never seen this before Never have I dreamed this before They ain't never seen this before And even if we ain't together <laughs> I can feel her through my veins This lady ain't fair weather huh. Listen, we made love in the rain Everything right here is here All of you and all of me some don't have the clear vision Cause they can't see oh, I, I, I ain't never seen this before, before. Uh, Never have I dreamed this before They ain't never seen this before I ain't never seen this before They ain't never seen this before Never have I dreamed this before they ain't never seen this before Oh, never say never When it comes to love That's for y'all, say It's for all of your lovers Never say never When it comes to your love huh. Mama might not understand it Best friend might not understand it huh. Don't never give up on love huh. Your ex-girlfriend might not understand it Ex-boyfriend might not understand it but don't you never give up on love oh, yeah. You know why? Even if, huh, they ain't never seen this before oh, oh. Never have they seen this before Never have I dreamed this before They ain't never seen this before I feel like I'm a living testimony in a sense mm -hmm. as an artist, you know, because I'm one of the few people, you know, in this area who really has tried my best to kind of just stay as me. Mm -hmm. and not compromise it because it's hard like I be wanting to like I be wanting to have <laughs> that <laughs> moment of art Lisa, that, I, yeah I love Lisa. then I want to do the magic where that ability to be aware of my surroundings my environments my space and um, and just kind of do that but Unfortunately, when you're one of those kind of people, you, you, you're going to always stand the risk of offending or people just not kind of getting that. And what I've learned is the more you surround yourself 
with people who get it mm -hmm. and get you. And that can come in the form of your partner, that can come in the form of your wife, your husband, that can come in the form of your management, that can come in the form of even with your unit as a band, you know, as you guys experience with Sound of the City and see the benefits of that and even creates even this platform. And so often people just settle or assume that because of our what we are that it's always about us. And really so often the things that we do that even come across as being about us, you know, like interviews or like whatever, it makes it even more clear or even more productive when the people you're around and the production you're working with, they get that and you don't have to explain. As a parent, you know. You know. And also just as a mother, you know, moms, let me tell you something, guys. <laughs> this is the magic moment. Mothers have to do a lot. They have to they have to juggle and balance a lot. And often, so often when something even when some shit really hits the fan, it's usually somebody's mama who is able to kind of do that. And the idea is this sister is here, she's an artist, I see her doing her thing and, and didn't even have been involved in this. Like, you know, y'all can talk about whoever y'all want to out here you think is reflecting you. But this is an example of somebody who's reflecting, like, your reality. Now, you can settle for the perception <laughs> of what they project out there. Or you can really tap into the reality, that part of you that knows that struggle. And that part of you that wants that story to get out there. So that's me. I try to be that person who's responsive to those people who are in that experience, mm -hmm. as well as be the person who's an observer of people who are going through that experience, who are, who are settling for selective morality, mm -hmm. who are settling for, you know, just sometimes just the flesh. You know what I mean? And, with it, and it's like without having a claim of religion or claim of set or claim of city, it's, you know, someone, I just saw someone title me in a blog, a religious. I've never been called that before. I didn't know how to take it. I didn't. I was scared that it would become across as atheist. I didn't know what. I didn't know what it means. And the person who wrote it lives in Paris, and I. I don't know what. It means. All right. So we've covered the acting portion of your artistic being. Right. 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 So moving on to the music. Mm -hmm. You are one half of the artist Crossroads with um, Raheem Devon, right? Yep, that's a group. Okay. Uh, the Crossroads is a group that we started back in like, I don't know, maybe it was um, shoot, 2001, kind of. Okay. That's kind of scary. You kind of throwing <laughs> out dates like that because it really make you be like, oh my God. Mm, right. <laughs> oh, I've been doing this for this long and you people only still want coonery. <laughs> Leave it, leave it. That home. was the magic. That was the voodoo. Anyway. <laughs> um, no, but we started this joint. We got together. Um, I saw him at the time. Raheem was kind of experimenting with this. these guys called the Tree of Soul. Mm -hmm. There was just some musicians that he had kind of got together. And I could see kind of some were serious, some weren't with him. So then one day I linked up with him and I was like, yo, man, if you like come to my shows, I'm, I'm going to pull you on stage and we're going to find songs that we can kind of integrate that you got verses that fit with my songs. Okay. And you know, I was like, I know you got the ear, so you would just make them fit. So then we started doing that, and then um, it just kind of picked up, and then we just kind of decided, like, well, let's just do it joint together, you know, like do stuff together. Mm -hmm. But then from me introducing him to kind of like that kind of community on U Street that was kind of going on, he was introduced to artists like Omar Rednew, um, and, uh, you know, Asheru and Bilal Salam and just a variety of characters who, you know, at that time, I felt were, I would say, making what I call progressive music, progressive art, art that's reflective of honesty and truth. And at that time, you know, he was more of an R&B kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And I was just, you know, I felt like I wanted to expose him to, like, you know, purpose in music and okay. purpose of talent and purpose of voice okay. and how you can use it as a tool and he basically like you know began to evolve and like work with these people on his own so then they developed the urban half 31 and he and i just made a decision that we were always going to make 
we're going to be a collective and never be at odds and as creatively. Because usually when you got two cats, they go, especially brothers in the same community or are catching the same kind of community's attention, mm -hmm. they're going to usually try to pit them against each other. So we just decided yeah. that before we even have to engage or entertain that kind of concept, we just immediately made a, a unit. And we made two records. We're currently like now selecting production and um, for a new for a new record. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. a new record. And um, you know, I'm excited about that because um, I know that he and I have both as artists and as fathers and as friends and as foes and as creative brothers have gone and experienced so much that right now what we will create will ultimately be what you know the world really needs to be introduced to as a crossroads where every people that know know about us they know about us right. you understand right. but a lot of people always wonder sometimes like yo they people come to me and be like yo dub man you should be famous man you should be man i see these are and i be saying to them like yo man you know i appreciate that but sometimes you have to, you know, when you're dealing with something that's like real or you at least attempting to present as real, mm -hmm. it has to happen in the natural order of things, okay. in a natural course. And so the Crossroads, we're working on a new record. That's me and him. And um, I look forward to it. So out of acting, singing, rapping, is there an, uh, a specific art expression that you connect to more than others? Um, I enjoy, uh, for me, I tell people my passion is theater. Because, okay. because acting is what focused me as a teenager. Okay. You know, I, I, you know, I was an athlete at one point. I was like, uh, you know, a poet while trying to be an athlete. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, but... I eventually just kind of like the thing that focused me was theater. Okay. And that's what I went to school to study. That's what I like grew a passion for. But then it enhanced kind of my natural ear as an artist who was a music musical artist who didn't go to school and study art but mm -hmm. study music in that form. Uh -huh. So what the theater did was it allowed me to kind of be able to tap in the ability of improvisation and being able to hear a note and imitate it or you know, find it. And so that enhanced it. And, um, you know, I'm going to constantly always uh, claim theater as my passion and what saved my life. Look right there, let folks know how they can connect with you. Okay, uh, if you want to connect with me, um, depending on what that means. <laughs> uh, Not your mama's address. We, right, right. Uh, <laughs> you know, what I would say is, you know, if you want to connect with me, um, you can follow me on Twitter, which is uh, at Wes Felton, um, as well as Instagram, at Wes Felton. Um, uh, I'm W. Ellington Felton um, on uh, Facebook. Um, but then also, like, if you're ever interested in, like, any type of, like, booking or, um, you know, whether it's book me for lectures or, uh, <laughs> you know, acting or whatever, you can uh, email me uh, at inlovewithmelodies at gmail. Um, and that's it. That's it. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming to the Boiler Room. We appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Y'all support this. This is, this is important. This is crucial. Listen. This is a crucial moment. <laughs> this is a crucial moment in time and in D.C. and the history and the legacy of D.C. Okay, guys? We can't keep running us out of here. All right? And you know, just remember to take care of each other. And people produce what you feed them. Yeah. So if you feed your artists, they're going to produce more things and more results for you guys. All right? I'm done. That's <laughs> it. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Praise the Lord. <laughs> um, I don't know what that was, but... Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, uh, right. Y'all watch his performances. Uh, we out. Know, we out. It. We out. All right, yeah. <laughs>
Don't get caught up in the traps, listen. Let me tell you about some real monsters. Not the devils, not the zombies, not no mobsters. They eat chitlins, chicken wings, and even lobsters. Catch them at the poetry spot, live nation and opera. Your local politician, preacher, and copper. Some are lawyers, some are rappers, or even doctors. Insane, speak slang, some even speak proper. That's just the ways of the world and real monsters. The real monsters, there you go. Over there, see them? Athletic, so entertaining, your kids wanna be them. Sacrifice, creative freedom for coliseums. Think they royalty with no loyalty or allegiance. Just supply and demand for all of the heathens. Misguided with misguided, the blind doing the leading. Laid out for the slaughter, they the only ones eating. Brainwashing all our daughters, the family's no longer teaching, family's no longer speaking unless they fucking tweeting. What the monsters is in they new, huh? Ad meeting, debating on who's worshiping who the following weekend. Or the next American false idol that they can try to speak in. Speaking of sneaks, did you get them new LeBrons yet? Speaking of sneaks, hey Jersey, is them lights back on yet? It ain't a hurricane, it's a monster on the deck. Controlling who the media gonna try to shit on next. It's the real monsters. Not the devils, not the zombies, not no mobsters. They eat chitlins, chicken wings, and even lobsters. Catch them at the poetry spot, live nation and opera. Your local politician, free during cop. Some are lawyers, some are rappers, or even doctors. Insane, speak slang, some even speak proper. That's just the ways of the world and real monsters. The real monsters, there you go. Over there, he can see you. Unlike you, he don't want to be you. A lot of monsters are very see-through. They feed you garbage so they can keep you under wrap, so they under wrap. Come and go like a thunderclap. Wear their shades inside, hide their eyes and hide under caps. Have you ever wanted that? Booming when you wanted that. Hit that made you more important than working at a laundry mat. They got that dope. It looks attractive, but mine's is better. Don't mind the package. A different tactic to make you more proactive. Buzzer beater, overtime. Why you still talking about practice? That's the breaking point. The monster's waking. Got a whole planet for my taking. But you can't have nothing by ever faking. I warned you, now run alone, cause monsters don't have patience. It's the real monsters. Not the devils, not the zombies, not no mobsters. They eat chitlins, chicken wings, and even lobsters. Catch them at the poetry spot, live nation and opera. Your local politician, preacher and cop. Some are lawyers, some are rappers, or even doctors. Insane, sweet slang, some even speak proper. That's just the ways of the world and real monsters. The real monsters. Uh. Not the devils, not the zombies, not no mobsters. They eat chitlins, chicken wings, and even lobster. Catch them at the poetry spot, live nation and opera. Your local politician, preacher, and cop. Some are lawyers, some are rappers, or even doctors. They say, they say. That's why, that's why you need to get out, get out, and get something. Don't spend all your day getting high. You need to get up, get out, and get something. <laughs> hey, it ain't all about being fly. Get out and get something. <laughs> Take care of your kids. You need to get out and uh, get something. There's more than life than showbiz. Watch out for the real monsters. Not the devils, not the zombies, not no mobsters. They eat chitlin, chicken wing, and even lobsters. Catch them at your poetry spot, live nation and opera. Your local politician, preacher, and copper. Some are lawyers, some are rappers, some are doctors. Insane, speak slang. Some even speak proper. That's the ways of the world. And the real monsters. The real monsters. Live performances mixed by Kevin Jackson of Night Flight Studios.